Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Strife Tech, and I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Is it worth your time? On trial today? Blood West Early Access. Made by Hyper Strange, this is the same developers that made Jupiter Hell, Rays, Frostheim, Elderborn, and others. Blood West is a retro first-person shooter with a heavy emphasis on stealth, resource management, and survival. It is currently in early access with no release date. Now, before we jump into this video, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor. Well, sort of sponsor. Okay, yeah, they're not really a sponsor at all. Ben Q hit me up and they said they'd send me one of their light bars if I talked about it in one of my videos. I didn't even know they made light bars. I know them as a monitor company. I'm actually sitting here with two Ben Q monitors right next to me, though neither are my current main monitor. I was hesitant at first and I asked them, well, what if I hate it? They told me that was fine as long as I gave it an honest chance. And so here we are. I've had it for about two weeks now and I'm not only pleasantly surprised, I'm a little smitten with it. I already figured it would help me out with the late night script writing and the video editing, and it's done all of that perfectly. What I did not expect is how it would improve my gaming experience. Their site makes claims such as, the best LED gaming lap levels up your gaming experience, along with, Enhanced performance. To achieve clutch performance and be the best gamer you can be, you need precise lighting with cool color temperature to help you focus longer without excessive brightening up the entire room. And other things like this. I thought it was all just a load of marketing BS. But here I am two weeks later and I can't play without it. I don't know if it's really made me a better gamer, but it has helped immerse me more in my games and I do feel less strain and fatigue on the eyes. Now, before you think, oh, Strife Tech, you just want me to buy it so you get credit. That wasn't part of the deal. The links down below are all direct links, no affiliate thing, no partner code, nothing like that. They won't even know if it was because of me you bought it. Anyhow, feel free to check it out and let's get back to the review. Oh, it worked. It worked. And he is even in one piece. Oh, me? You mean us? Nothing but an amalgamation of souls. More important question is, who are you? The answer is, you're undead. We brought you here by means of our immense powers from whenever place you've been before. We know of your exploits and achievements. Your fame reaches wide across the country. The nasty rumors about you reach even further. You're our ace in a sleeve. Before you ask, no, we cannot send you back. Not yet. See, that's the nature of every summoning. It must have a reason. And a reason you have. As an undead outside of others' influence, you will be our torch in the dark. Your spark will become the flame to purify the rot of this world and free us from the unending cycle of despair. Search for the evil lurking in this world. Smell the sulfur in the air. Taste the corruption. Understand the shattered reality. Sense the vitriol staining the remains. Only then will you be free again and able to leave. And that's the whole premise right there. From here, you're tasked with fighting objects of darkness and returning them to the totem. Each time you do, you get a little bit more of the storyline. Now, we never get any real answers about who we are, what this totem is, and when we'll be released. I hope that's just due to early access. Because what we have so far is intriguing and has a lot of potential. I'd love to see where this goes in the future. Blood West has a little bit of an identity crisis. It touts itself as a stealth FPS horror on the Steam page, but it doesn't lean hard enough into that to really be a stealth FPS game. It has all the typical stealth things, sneaking around, avoiding detection, throwing rocks, so on and so forth, so you can certainly try to embrace that playstyle, but the overall implementation of it just doesn't feel right. For one, you're in the middle of a desert, so the lack of cover is a real thing. You do explore some mines and tunnels, but they don't really lend themselves to stealth. I found myself wishing for like a lean or a peek button. Without it, you're forced to move and expose yourself to get a visual. Doing this causes the enemy to hear you and most of the time see you, which quickly builds up your detection bar. A bar that feels far too sensitive, even when I had every stealthing item and ability available. Then you throw in the movement speed and pathing of the enemy itself and it just doesn't mix well. Stealth doesn't feel great. Luckily with the skill choices, you can create a build that has nothing to do with stealth. So in my second playthrough, I just did a full melee build. There's a handful of skills and weapons that really lend itself to this playstyle. Things like stamina return on kills, increased health, increased damage, so on and so forth. On the third playthrough, I just went straight gunner. And this is where things got a little crazy.
One of the weapons had a fun mechanic where the drunker you are, the better it was, though the drunker you were, the more painful the game got. But there were a couple of skills that helped mitigate that too. So I'd mainly pick them off from a distance, then run in with shotguns and blast them all down. Both of these playstyles were a ton of fun, though not as fun as they could have been. They just have one foot in this stealth game and another foot in this RPG game. Both have a decent amount of potential, but they need to pick one way and lean hard. My one other annoyance was the loot system. As you're out, you'll find a whole bunch of artifacts, and you're able to equip them and they give you some stat bonuses. For example, a feather will increase your stamina regeneration by 25%, but lowers your maximum stamina by 25%. The issue here is you'd end the run with like 12 of these in your inventory. And since the effects don't stack, all you can do is sell them. And it just felt dumb selling all of these duplicate items. A real easy quick fix would just change the percentages on all of these. For example, give the stamina regeneration a range between 1 and 25%, same with how much it lowers your stamina by. Then you start getting some real choices and you got to look at these. Oh, this one gives me 25%, this one gives me 23 but this one lowers my stamina less, so I'm going to pick that one. Then just change the drop rate accordingly. The really good ones drop less, the really bad ones drop more often. The other possibility is making some sort of crafting system where if you have so many feathers and you combine them with a heart and a piece of string, you could make something. I don't know. There's, there's a whole bunch more thought that would need to go behind that. Enough with the complaining. One of the things I do want to praise is how they did exploration and the rewards for that. There were many times I was going around thinking, hmm, should I really be able to get up here? And oh, hey, there's an item up here. The rewards you get for exploring are good and really incentivize you to look around every nook and cranny. So overall, the game is in a good state, especially for early access. There's a nice world to explore, there's some quests, and it really gives you an idea of what they're going for and the potential this game really has in the future. They went for a retro aesthetic that works really well and it also pairs nicely with the music. It all melds together to give you this spooky, scary atmosphere. But the one thing that stood out for me most was the voice acting. New face around these parts? Come in, it's safe here, unlike most of this area. One of those bravados looking to make a quick buck? Just don't come back to me crying about all them monsters. All I care is that I get my share and I stay out of trouble. It all sounds great. The lines are delivered perfectly. The performances really help immerse you into the game. Honestly, I wish there was more dialogue and quests just so I could hear more of it. So, is it worth your time? If this was the game's final form, it would be an easy no. But as you finish the game, you're greeted with this. In total, they look to have at least three levels. So if this game had three levels and they really leaned into what they wanted to be, then yes, it's absolutely worth your time. But the problem is right now, we're in early access. If you don't know what that means, Steam clarifies and tells you that this game is not complete and may or may not change further. If you are not excited to play it in its current state, then you should wait and see if the game progresses further in development. Basically, you're taking a risk here. Luckily for us, we can look at Hyper Strange's previous projects. They did the same early access process with Elderborn and Jupiter Hell, both of which are released and have good reviews right now. So they seem to have a good track record. Ultimately, the risk is yours. My name has been Strife Tech and thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, you've either found this video to be worth your time or you enjoy the sound of me rambling. Either way, you should like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Is It Worth Your Time?